Senator Hinge. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much, um, Madam Acting De um, Deputy President. Um, I congratulate Senator Burston on raising this issue today in matters of public importance. It is very dear to my heart. And um, when I hear Senator Macdonald say, well, it's a bit late, we've actually got the review going, or Senator Urquhart gets up and says, oh, well, One Nation, this is just um, basically uh, political grandstanding and, and it was going to happen and we don't want to rush this and slap together. Well, might I say slap together? What? It's been 40 years, 40 years since the Family Law Court was introduced. Nothing's happened. And then Senator Urquhart blames the coalition for not doing anything in the period of time, the last four years since they've been in, in this place. Well, then I've got to ask the question, what has the Labor Party done about it? Absolutely nothing. And Australians have been screaming from the rooftops to have something done about the family law courts. And it was quite interesting where Senator Abet said for 23 years ago, the amount of complaints that come across his desk. The same thing with me. 20 years ago in this place, 1996, I raised about the family law courts in my maiden speech at that time. I raised it again in my maiden speech 20 years later in this place because family law court is very important to me and it, is, it, has, uh, it has had devastating effects on many, many families across this country. Now, the reform of the Family Law Act and the Family Law Court uh, generally is of primary, primary importance to myself and One Nation and my colleagues. In this regard, I have held a number of meetings um, with the Attorney General and on the first meeting with the Prime Minister I raised about the Family Law Act, putting forward proposals that might alleviate the cost, the delay and the heartbreak that is symbolic of actions before the Family Court of Australia and the Federal Circuit Courts of Australia in its application of the Family Law Act. I have met with the Chief Justice of the Family Law Court and numerous interest groups, including the Law Council of Australia, who have presented their concerns as well as potential solutions. It is a complex matter dealing, as it does with volatile, emotional family issues, often affecting the lives of children. Too often one hears of another tragedy, another domestic violence incident, a lost life or a family torn apart by division. Domestic violence orders are mainly issued in the various state magistrates' courts and often being used simply as a tool by one parent to stop the other parent in having access to their children. Yes, it's quite disgusting. Parents use their children as pawns and their vengeance that they have against the other parent. Often they are an abuse on our uh, court process. A party simply can make allegations of abuse to the police and the police will normally take out a domestic violence order against the accused parent. The domestic violence order is often being used as a weapon of vengeance by litigants to the detriment of the other parent, as well as their children, by denying access by that parent. But the police have little choice when confronted with claims of abuse. They have an obligation to protect the vulnerable, as we all appreciate. But often there is a very low standard of proof required before such an order is made. Once made, it is on the record. And that record is given serious consideration by the courts in reaching its determination on parental access orders. In this review of the family law, the issue of domestic violence orders for parties currently before either the Family Court of, or the Federal Circuit Court must be taken into consideration, as is the case in Western Australia. By doing so, orders are given by judges who are familiar with the litigants and are better placed to understand the true motive behind such an application. Equally, that judge is always in an informed position throughout the matter. Therefore, it is incumbent of the government to provide the necessary funding for the appointment of further judges, as well as double the number of registrars to hear these applications as expi expi 
as fast as possible. Couldn't get there. It is incumbent on this government to ensure equal access for both parents it is not simply a section in the Act as a primary premise, but is carried out, in fact, in court decisions. It is incumbent on this government to end the excessive delays caused by underfunding of the courts. The time delay between filing and commencement of a trial in the family court averages 18 months in most capital cities to an incredible 24 to 36 months in Sydney, Parramatta and Brisbane. The Federal Circuit Court of Australia is in fact worse, and this was a court that was meant to overcome those delays in the family court. The entire Family Law Act and its administration must be reviewed with a fresh outlook without being mired by the past. The urgency of finalising the terms of reference to the Law Reform Commission is paramount. Those terms of reference must be in conjunction and consultation with all parties and interest groups and not the sole discretion of the Attorney-General. It is time for politics to be put aside and every political party agree to work for a substantive review of the family law for the betterment of the Australian society, because the family is the most important element. Not to finalise the terms of reference immediately will only prolong these family issues, create further pressure on government departments and the courts generally. For the Reform Commission to successfully undertake this major review, the Attorney-General must make the necessary funds available, otherwise the review will not happen in the foreseeable future. I will ask the Attorney-General to finalise the terms of reference and to undertake to provide the funding that is necessary for the success of this overdue review. Let me add to this debate. Apart from the many Australians that I meet when I move around Australia, I have a personal matter in this as a mother and as a grandmother. I've been through the court systems and I've had to watch my sons go through the family law courts and how they were treated by their ex-spouses. I've seen DVOs put on them that was not warranted. I feel for the men out there that are going through this because it's unjustified. They have no recourse. They are missing seeing their children and they are devastated by it. To the extent that how many men do we know that suicide because of this? They are heartbroken. That is their children as well. And not only that, we have a legal system that is making the figures that I've heard could be possibly as much as $40 billion a year out of the family law courts. They talk about um, terms of reference that we don't want to rush into this. I have spoken to Senator Brand quite extensively and the other judges. And what really needs to be done? We need more judges. The judges that are on sick leave is not good enough. These judges are not being replaced. They're on long sick leave and the court system is suffering because of it. We need more registrars to actually take the workload off the judges and have um, their input into the mentions, which will <coughs> alleviate the pressure on the courts. DVOs need to be addressed as well and heard in family law court matters and not out of the courts so that the judges have a under clear understanding of the litigants. I do believe that prenuptial agreements should be drawn up and presented before the courts so that both parties will have an agreement as far as their properties and also um, agreements as far as the children. <clears throat> we need more centres so that once the, the courts make, um, what can I say, a supervised visits, that we don't have organisations like Relationships Australia denying men access to their centres, as I know the case, but also the fact is men should not have to wait, all women on the odd occasion have to wait months before they can actually see their children. I think it's disgraceful and I know of cases where they only see their children for a few hours a, a, um, a year. Also, legal aid needs to be addressed. People cannot afford these costs and they are actually trying to represent themselves in these courts. I'll finish on this note. Everyone's screaming for marriage equality. Well, how about divorce and parental equality? Thank you, Senator Hanson.